Hi everybody. So I got some feedback on the last Kickstarter video and people were asking for an update. So here's the January 2019 update. I'm going to go over some things that happened that I had predicted in the first video and some things that have come in and what's popular on Kickstarter, what's new on Kickstarter, different things that I'm backing, and hopefully that will make you able to make a more informed decision about things that you want. So the first step, I did receive the Gloomhaven play mats. They are pretty awesome. They look really good, they feel really good, and I would totally buy from Quiver, which is the company that made them again. If you bought them and you think that you're missing something, because they're a play mat, there's not a lot of things to stick to. There is a little tiny package of plastic cubes to be an indicator that you got to look for in the box. So make sure you check the box thoroughly, especially for things. If you get something from Quartermaster, they use a lot of uh, plastic peanuts. And I'm going to talk about Order of the Vampire Hunters a little later. I did a full buy of everything and I thought I missed some stuff, but I really just had to sort through every single peanut to find some dice in the bottom. So when you do get a package from especially Quartermaster because they use so many peanuts, um, make sure you check it thoroughly. There's some other companies like Simon that mainly use bubble wrap. It has no effect on the game or the quality of miniatures or the quality of the product. We're just talking about how things get shipped. Just make sure you check it thoroughly in case you think you missed something. Something may be stuck on the bottom or under one of the cardboard flaps. So just make sure you check things thoroughly before going on and complaining to sites and making things negative. And the next thing that came through was Nemesis. I did a video of doing the sun drop, the fake sun drop of my own. Uh, the game looks good. The components look good. I ordered some coin capsules to protect a few things. You have to randomly pick things out of a bag. Arkham Horror does the same thing. Well, Arkham Horror 3rd Edition does the same thing. I haven't played the other ones, but 3rd Edition for sure does it. And I like the feel of coin capsules when digging in. I think that rubbing around inside the bag might lift the paper off the cardboard. So I like having the plastic shell so I'll do Nemesis playthrough and maybe some more paint type stuff later with that. But so far I'm happy with what I got. Speaking of Nemesis upgrades, you can get some from the podcast Dice Tower. They have a new Kickstarter campaign. They're delivering things in packs. So every publisher seems to be part of a different pack. Uh, Awaken Realms for Nemesis and Lords of Hellas, which are games I have. Uh, I'd be interested in pack A, Deep Madness, which is very similar to Nemesis in the sense that it's space, aliens, things attack you. Uh, you can get in pack C. But pack B exists, but I didn't find anything that I liked. And a game that I particularly enjoyed called Chronicles of Crime allows you to use the guys from the Dice Tower as suspects, witnesses, etc., and the ever popular Gloomhaven, they're offering a separate scenario for $5. You can see on the right, there's a whole bunch of different publishers, publishers that are part of this promotion. Uh, and you should go in, look for Dice Tower. Uh, I'll put a link in the description for all the different campaigns so you can find things and uh, see if there's something that you'd like. Personally, I don't like the way that they're doing the award tiers. I contacted them. I haven't heard back. There's still a long way to go on this campaign. So um, you can uh, ask them if there's something in particular you wanted. I don't see a way, for example, to get pack A, C, and D. You can get A, B, C, but you can't get A, C, and D. You can get A and B, or you can get the Gloomhaven scenario but there's no way that's described so far similar to a pledge manager to say I can get these things that I wanted and decide in uh, another program or web app later what I wanted to get. 
it seems to be you're specifically pledging into a tier that maybe doesn't include all the things you want. So I'm waiting for feedback from them. I'll update the description uh, so you can get uh, up to the minute updates. You don't have to watch another video. Uh, if I find anything out from them uh, regarding how they're going to go through with this. They've done this for a long time. I remember seeing the Lords of Hellas promos and other promos from them in the past, including uh, things like the Eric Summoner Zombicide. So you're going to get the rewards. They're reputable. But uh, the question is, why did they do this in such a janky way when they've been around and they criticize campaigns from other Kickstarters? Why wouldn't they have this all together in something that works right off the bat? Maybe in the future, let's hope. Another one of these promotion podcast type Kickstarter campaigns for Promo Paradise is going to be ending January 29th and has pretty much the same problems as uh, the uh, the more... Uh, if, I don't want to say superior, I want to say... Uh, mature Dice Tower uh, Kickstarter in that there's a janky way that they are um, deciding on the promos that you can get. They have to continually add these extra tiers. They said that they're going to be doing an announcement on the 22nd is to see if you can get another one of the tiers that allows you to select what the uh, w which ones you want. I only want three, Lords of Hellas, um, Chronicles of Crime, and Brook City. This is the first Kickstarter campaign from this company. They have a big Facebook group and you know their website is their own thing. But um, I, I'm gonna guess it's okay. $19 would get me the three promos that I'm looking for. They have a bunch of other big games like, uh, I don't know, um, Terraforming Mars seems to be a huge one. Folklore, I hear a bunch about. There's a lot going on with this campaign. There's only about a week left. And for Brook City and Lords of Hellas and Chronicles of Crime, like I like those games. Brook City hasn't arrived yet, but uh, by all indication, it looks good. Brook City's... Um, toys, the cars and stuff. I just bought a game I'm going to talk about later, the Ninja Turtles game, and I think the miniatures will be great upgrades as uh, a way to cross-blend the um, components to have a better gaming experience. So I'm hoping they're going to uh, talk about how they can fix some of the issues, but uh, we'll see. Otherwise, you'd have to spend like $100, which is ridiculous. You can probably find these promotional items on Miniature Market or one of the other um, sites like eBay for far, far less money than it would take to uh, get those $100 tiers. So I really hope that they come up with something that allows you to get the stuff that you're looking for. Maybe there's a better way, such as price in a promo pack from uh, the other tiers of the smaller companies and the bigger things like terraforming Mars or the Awaken Realm stuff P or Chronicles of Crime people may uh, they may not be interested in the smaller games because they don't have them and maybe it would be just better to say put up $25 tiers to pick the three and include a promo pack for the smaller companies or have the smaller companies actually pay to uh, have themselves included and uh, not do these weird uh, super expensive tiers for no reason. The fans of both Dice Tower and the, the Board Game Spotlight, uh, they are paying for producer credits and have lunch with people and hang out at Gen Con. There's a lot of different uh, other things that are going on that they can be making that money from instead of just the people that are looking for uh, specific games. So hopefully next year they'll do something better. Even though it's the first one out, these are just cards. 
I don't think it'll take a very long time for them to get them out, especially if they already have the artwork and if they're printing them themselves. So let's keep looking at some stuff that's available now. Uh, Dark Rituals Malleus Maleficarum is by Dark Gate Games, and they came out with Order of the Vampire Hunters. I was able to get Order of the Vampire Hunters as a late pledge, and you can probably get everything you want. It looks like January 2020 ship date. I don't think they're going to hit that. I would say sometime in 2020 is when it'll actually arrive in your hands. But uh, the games look pretty cool. It looks similar to the way Vampire Hunters worked and the way that the tiles are all set up. Vampire Hunters had a lot of cross promotion with Fire Team Zero, Lobotomy, other uh, games that are not made by Dark Gate, but they tied in with. They delivered all of that stuff. It all looked really cool. I enjoyed painting all of the uh, the pieces. They weren't in, I believe the term is heroic scale. They were much more uh, realistic. So if you're into that more fantasy uh, scaling, it looks like Dark Rituals may be more in that wheelhouse. Uh, this one seems to be about witches, whereas Vampire Hunters was obviously exclusively about vampires. They had a lot of really cool research put into the Eastern European legends of different vampires. I'm going to hope that they're going to do basically the same thing. Vampire Hunters had lots of different expansions pop up. There's still 22 days to go uh, as far as uh, the campaign, which puts it into mid-February is when it's going to end. So if you check back in, I would guess that they have the same level of creativity set aside for Dark Rituals as they did for Vampire Hunters. And uh, the components are looking to be a little bit better. I uh, had to go in and design some laser cut pieces. If it's something that you're interested in, I have a PeeWeeGo um, store and you can purchase off that and buy the little kits to uh, make a uh, clear cut acrylic upgrade to things like the clock and um, little player dashboards and that kind of stuff. If you had Vampire Hunters, I'm hoping that the materials will be a little thicker on this one, it seems to be part of their uh, stretch goal strategy to uh, make those thicker components so that you won't have to do as much of that. But uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully uh, it'll all be nice and super upgraded. It's a new company. The uh, amount of sales are going to be a few thousand. It's not going to be tens of thousands. So uh, there might need to be some uh, aftermarket uh, fans like myself that go in and uh, make additional components. But uh, the artwork that's on the cards looks good. It just may not be super thick cardboard that won't affect how you play a game. And that's really what Dark Gate should be judged on. They do make fun games. If you like something like Zombicide, this may be in your wheelhouse, especially if you liked Zombicide Black Plague instead of the modern stuff. If you did like the modern stuff and you wanted a vampire version, go out and uh, seek out Order of the Vampire Hunters. If I can find the time, I wanted to make a nice custom storage box for vampire hunting that had uh, secret compartments that would drop down with, uh, you know, like a Bible holy water flask, some steaks, and uh, little containers of or jars of garlic. And uh, I'm just working on how I want the uh, secret compartments to work out. And then otherwise it would flip up with little wooden uh, boxes to hold all of the minis and other stuff to play the game. I like having uh, my stuff in nice containers and uh, it just makes you feel a little closer to the game, a little closer to the theme. And if that's something in the build process people are familiar with or interested in, um, when I finally get the designs all worked out, maybe I'll post it up if that's something people want to hear about. 
as far as boxing this thing up, I'll probably do something similar to what Richard Grant's character from Warlock would have used against Julian Sands. It's a movie from 91. If you have the opportunity and you'd like stupid horror movies that are awesome beyond their, uh, their budget, the Warlock series is amazing. Julian Sands is epic as the Antichrist. And uh, with uh, Richard Grant sitting there licking a leather whip, trying to salt it, running into uh, Mennonite uh, villages to look for nails, to hammer into uh, the footprints of the, uh, the witch to hurt them. Oh, so awesome. And I'll probably do something similar for this game that I have planned for Vampire Hunters and make a Witch Hunter kit. Um... You can get the DeWalt uh, beautiful tough stack um, uh, boxes and systems to keep your tools in or keep your games in. If you don't want to modify anything else, that's what I use for a lot of stuff. But sometimes you just want to make a nice, pretty, old school uh, crate or case that uh, buffs up that theme and and just makes you really want to play and think about the uh, experience of the game. The words Malleus Maleficarum actually means the witch hammer and is a book that was used to hunt and attack witches. It's a real thing. You could look it up. Um, obviously, witches are not real. Uh, spellcraft and all the other stuff is not real, despite what... Uh, the 15th and 14th century people would want you to believe to uh, explain their world but it is still really cool to um, go in and uh, just read a little bit about um, how they viewed the world and uh, Malleus Maleficarum you can read on uh, Google Books or any of the other stuff if you're looking for ideas. Delving back into my childhood of the late 80s and early 90s we have the Ninja Turtles, and it's not the Ninja Turtles of the cartoon with the Chuck Lorre theme song from Big Bang Theory fame. Uh, it is by Kevin Eastman, along with IDW as a publisher, as a brand new comic book series that this is based on. If you watch the Toy Galaxy uh, breakdown of the history of the Ninja Turtles, you would know that the Ninja Turtles are actually based on the Frank Miller version of Daredevil. Um, La Eastman and Laird were big fans. They made kind of a joke of this gritty, dark set of ninjas. And it was uh, another just joke between the two of them. They made Ninja Turtles and uh, they had been uh, selling the comic books themselves through Mirage Studios, which was another joke because Mirage didn't exist. And uh, they made a dark, gritty world of these mutant animals. If you're like me and you grew up in the 80s and you were obsessed with the turtles, you may have also come across the Palladium Games, TMNT, and other strangeness, and then never found anyone to play it with, but were infatuated with how awesome the theming of the Palladium Megaverse system was integrated into TMNT and other strangeness and wanted to play it. For me, the closest I'm going to be able to get probably to get a good game of the RPG is to play this IDW uh, game of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shadow of the Past and this new expansion, City Fall, and Change is Constant. The uh, additional mutants, uh, there's a fox lady that, it looks like a fox to me, I haven't read the comics all the way through of this new version, it's a brand new run. Um, and there's crocodiles and other, uh, there's a cat that is the big enemy of Splinter, which makes so much more sense that a mutant cat would be against a mutant rat and uh, they unlocked over this MLK weekend 
over 60 comic books that will come in digital editions if you back uh, these two games. You can get one of them, you can get two of them. There's a bunch of extra boxes with your Saga Yojimbo and uh, other ways to have dark versions of the turtles and other cool stuff. They seem to be unlocking something new every day and it has the blessing of Kevin Eastman, which is awesome to have. So IDW, I have their uh, ray guns and rocket ships, which is one of the first things I painted. And thanks to Scott Rogers, um, he even signed it and made a little rule for me on the inside of the box. So it's great when game developers, um, you know, go out to the fans and show off the games. If you have kids that are of the age to play a Ninja Turtles game, Ray Guns and Rocket Ships by IDW is also suggested. And uh, the minis are neat looking. They're not at all of the scale or proportions of the cartoon, especially not the one from 1987 where it is very friendly. These guys are much more lean and ninja-like than they are cute turtle-like, which is the style of the comic book. I will point out that the type of game this is is two or more players. There's no solo mode. If you're interested, you can do like I did and get a full The Works box of Shadows of the Past. For less money than it cost on Kickstarter on Amazon right now, I was able to uh, find a store here in Long Beach that had a copy um, for if you were to take the total amount of money, including shipping, would have been less than purchasing the full Kickstarter of Shadows of the Past. So you can do the same thing and get yourself a copy from a local game store. It's about 150 bucks and it comes with uh, all kinds of stuff you can make a decision if it's the type of game that you want to play it did some interesting things with the map which i saw on games like mice and mystics where they use different colors to uh, tell you what kind of terrain was uh, on the map if something was impassable if something was difficult to get through and i think I'm going to break out the uh, 3D printer software and build myself some terrain that fits the scale of the tiles. There's different computers, cameras, dumpsters, different things that you would find the turtles hiding in, including uh, manhole covers for sewers and different types of access points. Um, haven't had a chance to play through the game just yet. I just this morning finished upgrading the components by sealing them all in and that makes it uh, nice for me to play through and I still need to go through and paint everything so it might take a little bit of time before uh, I get a full playthrough but it is highly highly reviewed by uh, Dice Tower and other places it was one of the top games to grow on you and get better by Tom Vassell in a uh, uh, report that he did uh, as part of the Dice Tower channel you can look up and uh, that's good and especially if you're gonna have kids if you wanted to get something you're gonna invest some money in you want it to get better you want to be able to play with them and have the game not suck for you and uh, give them something to do so feel free to jump in get Shadows of the Past play it and see if uh, you want to get one of the other adventures before February 8th and that's about when it should end depending on your time zone where you are whatever and uh, maybe even in the future you'd be able to find uh, a late pledge of this if you're uh, finding out about the game way later now I'm gonna do something a little different and hopefully this becomes a, a new segment but I want to do something that not too many other people are doing just go through what's popular on kick track if there's something that uh, piques your interest then jump in on it lots of different types of games and I'm probably not going to back most of these but 
just going to describe them. If you are clicking on this video and you just want to know stuff that's on Kickstarter in 2019, to be fair, I uh, feel like it would be a good idea just to discuss some of the other things that are on there. Most of the people just look at the top 10 on KickTrack and it's two or three things. I'm going to go a little beyond that and uh, hopefully shed some light on games you may be interested in. And that's really kind of the point. You can stop this channel at any time, jump onto the next one, but maybe you'll find out that uh, something in there really interests you. And that's what I should be doing, bringing things to you you might be interested in and describing them in a way that uh, if you are the type of person that is the right market for this, you'll get excited about. So let's give it a shot. The first one up is a RPG project called Wolf Spell, and it is the one that is the most similar to Of Mice and Mystics, which I mentioned before, in that you're a human that has been changed into an animal. In the way that it's described, it's going to be printed like a heavy metal album cover, and that is the actual intention is to print it on this trifold album cover that you see at the top. Um, I think it's just one adventure in a new RPG type of environment that you're just supposed to play through as wolves against the world. It was based on a short story and you can get what is a unique package for this type of game. Uh, for 50 bucks you can get the story that it was based on and this album cover or for less money you can get the original story or just the album cover game it is a first time creator I don't know if uh, they're gonna be able to make it to the end it does look like it's going to get backed and funded they say the game is complete they're just waiting on some other elements um, if you want to risk it and you have a whole bunch of people that, uh, you know, are in your RPG group that want to try something new, this could be an option for you. They say they're going to ship in February, which, uh, would be amazing if they've got it all, uh, ready to go that quickly. But, uh, Wolf Spell may be it for you if you want, uh, an interesting time, um, uh, with your RPG group or you've got a little bit of vacation time, or uh, you just have a bunch of people that are uh, ready to try something new. Next is a game I'd probably be a lot more excited for if my grandfathers were still alive, and that is the expansion Anti Up to Western Legends. <clears throat> if you read on the bottom, it says Western Legends core game is not included, because it's not. I don't know why. I don't know why they don't set it up so you can get it as a bundle, but uh, they've. Uh, I don't have the Western Legends game. It's hard enough getting my friends into themes that they're more familiar with that uh, I just wouldn't be able to get any of my friends to play. Myself, I've done my own leather work, created holsters based on the movie 310 to Yuma. I've modified uh, the holsters from that movie to fit guns of my friends so for me it'd be great it's just i have no one to play with so if you have someone to play with then uh, this might be something for you especially if you have the western legends game it's only 40 bucks and at this time you only have a few hours left to get it so you're probably going to be looking into the late pledges to uh, pick it up and I'm sure it'll be available. Colossal has had several Kickstarters go to completion and I've even seen Western Legends at retail. So there's a very good chance that uh, this is going to be available in the future for you. Some gaming accessories have made it to the list. This is Lovecraft Loot by Black Oak Workshop. They have 14 other projects they've created, which are also dice and dice bags. The dice look pretty neat in that they have, uh, you know, the face of Mr. Lovecraft. And you can get them in black or in blue. 
the project has funded the locked symbol you can see um, this thing still has quite a bit to go so I think that unlock is going to happen the dice bags look kind of neat they uh, seem to have a track record of being able to put these things together this also has a super fast turnaround of February 2019 these are not exactly the most difficult things to screen print on or embroider or you know have made somewhere nearby the cost is like 10 bucks for a dice bag and for something that's gonna be in the low hundreds at most that is about as cheap as you can get so they're not making a fortune on these uh, I hope that they're able to uh, make everything work out. They have some neat looking dice. If you have Call of Thulu or you bought uh, the Thulu Death May Die, then hey, this may be a great option uh, by the time those arrive to have some nice theme dice that you can't get otherwise. I would suggest for Arkham Horror 3rd Edition the old dice that they sold for the blessed cursed and regular green dice but they don't sell them anymore for arkham horror so until uh, those are available again these may be the best themed dice for a uh, lovecraft mythos experience if that's what you're looking for speaking of looking for things we've got a game played in the dark which is AV Ghost and it is made in Spain by Mystical Games. They've had one successful Kickstarter that's delivered and one problem I kinda see is they started this other Kickstarter before delivering the last one. After I got burned by Relic Knights I'm gonna wait until the company has all of their products out before starting another Kickstarter just because of how poorly Relic Knights uh, did their job. I got burned. It has nothing to do with Mystical Games. It has everything to do with uh, me just not being willing to uh, jump on something and trust a company I've never worked with or seen their stuff from. Their previous games are more cutesy than this AB Ghost one. I don't think they use the same people to develop the sculptures it looks a lot like um, honestly the Street Masters figures so maybe they're also using Panda uh, or another one of those types of companies that uh, makes very similar miniatures the main thing going on with this one is you sit your guys on top of a flashlight setting filters and you turn all the lights off in the room and somehow you're supposed to be able to play the game if there's things to read in the scenario or how the cards work all that stuff in the dark i'm gonna wait i think it might be really cool that you have to search through and find stuff but the intro video and other explanations that are on the site have not uh revealed enough to me about the gameplay to know what's going on but if this is something that does a good job of solo and i see some other reviews of how the game is played i'm not so worried about the miniatures i'm just worried about the gameplay and how easy it will be to see the um, uh, different markers under the filters i've done more than a few uh, UV paint jobs in my time and I've seen that the way that they can react and age uh, they can dissipate fairly quickly depending on how they're treated and I don't think all of this is going to be UV some of it seems to be also in the red filtered um, I just don't know if you're gonna be able to see much of it so I'm gonna wait and then I'll pick up a late pledge if I can. Uh, if I can't, then maybe they'll come out with uh, something else in the future. It has an app that goes along with it, 
maybe you're supposed to use the cell phone light to in order to see the uh, cards and other things and scenario instructions so we'll see we'll see how this thing actually turns out but i just see too many possible only possible they could have totally worked it all out but there are possible design flaws that i'm just not sure enough yet to part with another 150 bucks or whatever it's going to cost but other than that the game does look pretty cool and it looks at the minimum interesting in how it plays out i don't like that you can't play it in the daytime but uh you know it it seems to be that friends of mine have a lot darker homes than they have well-lit ones for playing games in so maybe this will work best in those circumstances where um, the kids have all gone to sleep and it's just you and your friends and hopefully uh, they're not too drunk to play games like mine are always too drunk to play games which is why you can never get them to do anything but uh, hey that's my problem not yours and it's definitely not mystical games issue so like i said they have delivered in the past but there's a couple of things i'm wary of not necessarily red flags but at least yellow flags and i'm gonna hold off until i find out some more this ends pretty quick if you wanted to jump on it and uh i mean i'm sure you can talk to them about late pledges one thing also speaking of red flags the previous Kickstarter campaigns have backer-only updates. That worries me a little bit, because if it were good news, why wouldn't they want everyone to see it? So, the other stuff were yellow flags. That one's a red flag. I'd contact them directly, or take a look in Board Game Geek for people that have purchased their other games. Most of their... Uh, purchasers seem to be in Spain so do the best you can to use Google Translate to read the uh, the different comments speaking of checking the Kickstarter comments the Kraken Attackin game is made by the same company that made one of my favorite horror themed games Lobotomy unfortunately Lobotomy was a mess the people that bought pledges were eventually able to get them but fulfillment took years literally years it wasn't like hey we made all of the components we put them all together we put them in boxes shipped them out they were on tankers and got distributed no it was like they piecemeal made a couple of here, a couple of there, and then delivered them out. People in Europe got them a year before the people in the U.S. And two to three years, I think, before the people in the rest of the world. This is a very different campaign from Lobotomy. Lobotomy was horror-themed and was awesome when you actually got to play it. But it took a really long time, like I said. Kraken Attackin looks like they probably made a hard shift or were paid to make a game. And it is a kid-friendly family game. Now, if you're into the whole Tiki Pirate theme, or you're just a big fan of Giant Squid, this may be a game for you if you are willing to wait a long time for uh, a game to arrive I really hope that's not gonna happen to you they are the ones saying that uh, they'll have it out by October 2019 if they're using the same partners in China and haven't learned their lessons or haven't used these guys before all of those are red flags um, it may be a high yellow way into the orange flag because they did deliver uh, what they said they were going to deliver so it's up to you if you want to risk it I honestly think you can probably pick this up from uh, a used copy 
in a couple of years if you're really uh, interested in it. I don't want to bash Titan Forge because I really want them to be able to come out with more games, fix their problems, and have games that are as much fun as Lobotomy. But the themes for Lobotomy that made it so much fun have nothing to do with whatever's in this crack and attack and game. It was a very uh, adult theme uh, game and would be more akin to the Kingdom Death crowd than it would be for the Milton Bradley type of people. So decide maybe, hey, this could be uh, where Titan Forge rebuilds their reputation. I really hope it is. I hope they get good partners. But uh, it might not be worth the risk to get the Kickstarter. You may want to wait and get a late pledge or see how things are going before you pick it up. That's about where I'm going to wrap it up. There are a lot of war games also on uh, Kickstarter you can find on KickTrack. I don't have enough experience with that type of game to give much of an opinion, and I don't think it would uh, work in the best interest of those companies for me to try to comment on them. It wouldn't be fair to them. So I'm going to cut it here. I'll try back in February, see how things go. Um, if there's anything uh, that you would like to mention or comment on, um, something you're excited for, something you want me to cover or be on the lookout for, uh, just leave a comment. If you can help the channel grow, then uh, you feel free to subscribe. You can thumbs up. You can look at the other videos. Um, I try to keep as much current as I can by updating the descriptions whenever anything changes. Uh, I have been putting on some of the videos Amazon affiliate links. Um, if you wanted to purchase any of the stuff that I mentioned, it gives me a little bit of a kickback, which uh, won't cost you anything more, but will help me out. So that part's up to you. There is still Everrain and the Street Masters Aftershock Pledge Managers. Uh, today is the 21st that I'm recording. They have until the 31st to still be within the January time frame. So I expect those to be coming up soon. And I know a lot of the people that are interested in my Street Masters content really want to jump on Aftershock. If you're just jumping on from Aftershock, I made 30 episodes describing every single fighter in the game and most of the stages, all of the ones from the core box, some of the other ones from expansions to help you play the game and decide which fighters you want to use. Uh, I made the Nemesis painting videos so far, so I'm trying to diversify and add things to the channel also. I haven't been using backing music on these long form videos. I'm waiting to hear back from some of the companies about the legality of using their audio. I don't want to use just the generic stuff because it doesn't fully fit the uh, purpose of what I'm doing, but uh, hopefully they'll get back to me and we'll have some good music for you. Unless you just like the sound of my monotone delivery then by all means, play something else behind it. Uh, have a good one.